It's 4.30 on WKYT this morning. EKU classes are canceled today, and so are several big events. What does that mean for the city of Richmond? Two employees from R.J. Corman Railroad Group are dead after trying to help out with flood damage in South Carolina. And after a weekend burglary, Lexington's Animal Control Center is now asking for your help. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning, and it's so nice to have you with us on WKYT on this Thursday. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Let's see what's happening with the weather with Jim Caldwell, who's in today for Micah. Yeah, it's pretty quiet out there, guys. Temperatures at some pretty comfortable levels, and that's likely where they're going to stay as we progress through most of the day today. We're going to warm up again, naturally, but we're going to stay at a very comfortable pace throughout most of the day. Let's grab the clicker. Sorry. 59 right now in Lexington, 57 in Richmond. So it's not that bad out there. You know, a decent start. We'll look at what Defender is tracking, and you're going to find a whole lot of nothing today. But once we get into the day tomorrow, showers and even a few thunder showers could come calling with the passing of a cold front. It's not going to be a widespread and just nonstop thunderstorm event. Showers, though, will certainly be on the increase. And then some cooler air filters in for the weekend. I'll track all of it coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, look forward to the full forecast, and we'll see you then. And in the news, they say that police are needing some time to conduct a thorough investigation. So Eastern Kentucky University officials decided to cancel classes for the rest of the week, four days after a threatening message was found in a restroom on campus. EKU police say that they're interviewing people who have been identified in the case through tips. The university is offering a $10,000 reward. Many students left campus yesterday to head home for a long weekend. And those we talked to called the threat pretty disruptive. Uh, I just hope whoever did this knows that we are all very frustrated and you have made a lot of enemies on campus. EKU also canceled last night's performance of Joseph in the amazing Technicolor Dream Code at EKU Center for the Arts. Tonight's EKU football game against Tennessee Tech has been moved to Georgetown College. Those who already have tickets will be allowed in, but seating is general admission. WKOT's Garrett Weimer spoke with Richmond City leaders about how this threat will also have an impact off campus. The buildings are empty, a busy campus turned barren, mostly. But the quiet classrooms and crosswalks all come with a cost. We are inextricably bound, and therefore we too must be concerned. Uh, about whatever takes place on that campus. The consequence of the situation on campus does not stop at the edge of EKU property. Richmond leaders say it also impacts the surrounding city. Part of it is dollars and cents. City Commissioner Robert Blythe says the economy will feel the students being gone, as well as canceled or relocated events like the football game that bring in a lot of people and money. Those folks who would come into this city to be a part of those events. Uh, will not be coming into the city. So I'm sure that's going to be felt uh, by many aspects of our economy. But it's more than just the economics of it. Blythe says he's talked with his church congregation about the threat because it impacts the entire community. We've talked over the years about EKU Richmond, Richmond EKU partnership. We're in this thing together. So what affects that campus, positively or negatively, affects this community positively or negatively. Now it's an important time, he says, for everyone to look out for one another, on campus or off. In Richmond, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Thanks so much, Garrett. EKU's fall break is on Monday and Tuesday. Students will return to class on Wednesday. Lexington city officials are telling us that they had no control over the planning for the Luke Bryan concert at Talon Winery. Lexington police say the concert caused traffic to back up for eight miles along Tates Creek Road. Some fans told us they couldn't even get to the concert because of the traffic, and it took until four in the morning to get everyone out of the concert area. City leaders say a 2006 Board of Adjustments ruling gives wineries the ability to hold events as long as it is not the primary purpose of their business. But Talon Winery leaders think there was not any major problem there. There was nothing we could do. Uh, there was really nothing public safety could do. There was no review for public safety to make on this. We're in the country. Uh, it's two lane road, um, and that's, I think that's why they opened the gates at two to try and get everybody in as early as possible. City officials say the public safety and the Urban County Council will be discussing the issues, and they say there could be changes in how events like this are regulated in Lexington. 
Well, two workers from Nicholasville based RJ Corman Railroad Group died in the flooding in South Carolina. The coroner has identified them as 57 year old Robert Vance of Lexington and 53 year old Ricky McDonald of Chesapeake, Ohio. Investigators say early yesterday morning, a truck carrying the two men and three other RJ Corman employees fell into a hole in the road that had been washed out in flooding near Columbia. Three men made it to safety. People in Nicholasville say the news of the deaths has hit hard in this tight knit community. Obviously, our hearts go out to those families of those people, and, and um, it's just a, a terrible thing, you know. What can you say? I mean, it's just something unfortunately that happened. A spokesperson for RJ Corman says that the workers were among 95 people the company sent to the Carolinas to help Norfolk Southern repair lines damaged in the flooding. South Carolina leaders are still warning people in the state's low country to watch out for more flooding. They say it could be this weekend before that threat eases. South Carolina's U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham said damage from the flooding could end up costing more than a billion dollars. And the University of South Carolina says Saturday's home football game against LSU has been moved to Baton Rouge because of the flooding. Somerset police here in Kentucky investigating this morning after a six-year-old child was left alone on a school bus. Bus. Police say the driver of the bus took children to a skating rink for a field trip and then went to Walmart and then to Lowe's. And a few hours later, police say someone in the parking lot saw the child on the bus and called for help. Police say the child ended up being left on the bus because of some miscommunication between the school staff and the bus driver. The child was not injured, and her mother picked her up. At this point, they do not anticipate any charges. The superintendent of Somerset Independent Schools says they will now review this case to make sure it doesn't happen again. Well, this morning, police are asking for your help finding two Taylor County inmates who escaped during a work detail. The Taylor County Sheriff's Office says 25 year old Joshua Gill and 23 year old Michael Tetrial drove off yesterday in a stolen car that belongs to the Taylor County Jail. Police later found the car abandoned. They say the men were last seen wearing orange shirts and khaki pants. Well, they're used to help animals in emergencies, but Lexington Animal Care and Control officials say that burglars broke into three storage trailers last night and sold some very expensive equipment. And they say that this crime is a huge setback for them. Now investigators are needing some help in tracking down the burglars. WKYT's Monique Blair has more. Late Saturday night, the Lexington Fayette Animal Care and Control officers discovered the master locks on three emergency trailers had been pried open using bolt cutters. And inside, they found two generators had been stolen. Lexington Fayette Animal Care and Control Officer Timothy Brown has just one question for the thief or thieves who burglarized these three animal trailers. Why did they do this? Um, and that's a question that nobody can answer except for the ones who actually did it. The trailers are intended to provide assistance during emergency situations. And Officer Brown says on Tuesday, just a few days after the two generators were stolen, Animal Care and Control experienced a minor emergency. Now, we really could have used those generators yesterday because we were without power for a couple of hours. With the power out Tuesday, Officer Brown says $1,000 worth of vaccinations was put at risk and hurt the agency's ability to provide the best care for the animals because there wasn't a generator. So now Officer Brown says he wants to know who is responsible. None of us really know the meaning behind why they did it, um, but a lot of the trailers have equipment, emergency equipment, so if we ever were to get called out, you know, it, 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 you know, it has the equipment in there that could actually help us in any type of situation. Now, no suspects have been identified at this time, but if you have any information about this crime, you are asked to call the Lexington Fayette Animal Care and Control. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Officials say the trailers that were broken into were federally and locally funded, and one had been donated. A northern Kentucky reptile shop owner attacked by a 20-foot python is now speaking out about the frightening experience. This morning, Terry Wilkins is back at home and doing a lot better. He owns the captive-born reptile shop in Newport. On Monday, he was cleaning out the snake's cage when it suddenly thought his arm was prey. He thought it was feeding day, and uh, he reached out and grabbed my elbow, and that's where the fun began. 
He calls it fun. Hmm. I'm sure he was not thinking that for real. Well, by the time police arrived, they say Wilkins was unconscious. The snake had wrapped itself around him. Luckily, police were able to free Wilkins from that snake, put it back in its cage. Wilkins says that he has 24 stitches from the bite on his arm, but he is expected to make a full recovery. Kroger is testing some high-tech shelves in a northern Kentucky store. The company is installing digital shelf edge technology in its Cold Spring store. The price tags on the shelves are all digital. Kroger says the tags are larger and they're easier for customers to read than traditional plastic tags. The company also says the shelves can provide real-time product information, including any allergens. Kroger says if it's successful, digital shelves may soon appear in some of its other stores. Interesting. I like that because if you don't have your glasses, you know, it's hard to read those little labels. Can be. And our time is 441 on WKYT this morning. Good to have you along on this Thursday, now rolling toward the weekend. Well, thousands of women deal with infertility. Today's Moms Every Day expert shares what not to say to someone having trouble conceiving. Coming up. And we're going to track another spectacular day out there today. But we've got a lot of change coming at you for Friday and into the weekend. We'll take a closer look coming up.